I'm sick and tired of it and we have to fix this. I am really frustrated today. Let me tell you why. I was on a flight from LaGuardia to, to Dallas yesterday, which is about a four hour flight. There was some bad weather in the New York area, which was making it a little longer. And about three hours in, as everybody was sleeping, or not everybody, but a lot of people were sleeping. It was a daytime to evening flight that landed at like 6 p.m. in Dallas time. Uh, so a lot of people were sleeping. A lot of the window shades were down. The cabin was nice and dark. The stupid flight attendant gets on there and announces, ladies and gentlemen, there's an hour left on our flight. And I'd like to take this moment to tell you about a very special credit card opportunity. Blah, 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 blah. 50, 60,000 miles. You can use wherever you want, fly wherever you want, whenever you want. Go to Europe, go to Hawaii, blah, 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 blah. He woke up probably 30 or 40 people on that flight. I was enraged. A, I hate the credit card pitch. It turns paying customers into market, marketing collateral, which is so wrong. Now, like something on Facebook or Gmail, I get it. Like, I'm getting something for free from Facebook which means I'm not the customer, I'm the product that they sell to their advertisers. I get that, I get how marketing collateral works. But I was paying for that flight and I was paying for my mom who was sitting next to me to be on that flight. How dare they turn us into marketing collateral on a flight we're already paying for. Give us a flight for free, market to us all you want. I get it, market to us whenever you want. But you wake up 30 or 40 people just to pass out some credit card applications. So. If you've been on an American flight lately and you're frustrated by this, let me give you some explanation on why they do it. Let me further give you an explanation on why Americans not going to get rid of it. But then let me give you my recommendation for how we fix it, okay? Number one, why are they doing it? Well, here's the reason. Um, Barclays handles the in-air credit cards for American Airlines. They offer credit cards that can only be applied for in the air. Some of them can be applied for online. But they'll have an offer, an enticing offer, 60,000 miles or 50,000 miles if you just make one purchase and then uh, you can use those miles to go wherever you want, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, uh, when they walk through the aisle, they hand out these credit card applications. And if you fill those out, uh, on the bottom of those or somewhere on the application, there's a little code. And that code has a flight attendant, or that code ties that application back to a flight attendant who was on that flight. If you're approved for a credit card, that person gets 50 or $60, I think, depends on the month. Sometimes more, sometimes less, but around 50 or $60. Uh, if they get enough applications in a month and they get some sort of bonus. So that's why the flight attendants do it, okay? Here's why American is not going to get rid of this, even though their customers hate it. A, American's expenses are low enough right now that they're making money, so they don't really need to care what customers think. I know that sounds harsh, but that's just the reality of the situation. Right now, American's customer is their investors. The, the actual people flying on their flights don't really matter right now, and they won't until oil keeps going up, which it's starting to. Anyways, American's not going to get rid of it primarily because their flight attendants are making more money and American's not having to pay it. So Barclays is paying all of these bonuses to the flight attendants. So the flight attendants are supposedly happier because they're making more money, and Americans happy because they're not having to pay it. So if, if we were to say we demand American to get rid of this program, and American said, okay, we will, the flight attendants would absolutely lose their mind because all of a sudden they don't have that opportunity to, to make more money. So Americans not going to get in a union battle, and this not, it's not a anti-union or a pro-union statement, just American does not want to get in a labor relations battle with their flight attendants because Lord knows they have enough problems with uh, the flight attendants and the pilots already. So America's not going to do that. So how do we fix this? And I, I think the way to fix it is by taking a look at a typical domestic flight first. So we're going to look at a typical domestic flight aboard, let's say, this Airbus 321 that I happen to take video of this morning at Founders Plaza at DFW International Airport. And quickly, I'm, I'm going to try to draw an aircraft here, and, and you're going to quickly realize why this is not Andy's art and or sketching blog. This is Andy's travel blog. So let's uh, start drawing a little plane here, and that would be the vertical stabilizer. And then... Uh, I guess that's the rest of the fuselage, and then let's give the pilots a little window, and that's a wing, and well, I got to complete the circle, and that looks like it could carry maybe like three people. Anyways, that's a plane. Good job, me. Okay, so now we have the relative stages of the flight. So 
Up first, we have the beginning of the flight, and that was a little too long, so let's shorten it up a little bit. So the beginning of the flight are when things like you're boarding, you're putting your stuff in the overhead compartment, safety video plays, you take off, you get up to landing or to cruising altitude, and then you have the uh, beverage snack service. Okay, beginning of flight. Let's make sure that's in the right place there. Okay, so up next you have, well, sorry, not next, but at the end, you have the end of the flight. So this is pretty much from the initial descent that the flight crew announces, uh, and then you kind of descend, and then you land, and then you taxi to the gate, and unless you're at LAX, you'll have a gate to go to, and then you'll be on your way. So end of flight. And then in the middle, you have... This, get ready for this, the middle of the flight. This is the time between the first, between the beverage service and the initial descent. And this is time for you to watch a movie. It's time for you to catch up on work. It's time for you to catch a little nap, okay? So it's the middle of the flight and or relaxing as much as it's possible in those ridiculous seats. We want to at least try to relax, okay? So I think I speak for all of us that if I have to hear a credit card pitch, if I have to, I don't want to, but if I have to, I'm okay with it at the beginning of the flight. I'm okay with it at the end of the flight. I just don't want it in the middle of the flight, okay? I just don't want it in the middle of the flight. Okay, so that is my solution. We limit the window they have where they can tell us about it, to a normal window. We're already used to hearing announcements during the beginning of the flight and the end of the flight. All we're asking for, American Airlines, if you're watching this, is to leave the middle of the flight to your customers. Let them actually enjoy the flight. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this rant. Um, and God, man, I hope it goes away. I'm just so angry for all the people who were sleeping yesterday and had it rudely interrupted by a guy who was looking to make money from people who had already paid for a flight. It's absolutely ridiculous uh, and, and it needs to be fixed. So until next time, this is Andy from Andy's Travel Blog. Everybody take care and uh, we'll see you in the unfortunately noisy and distracting skies.